Dear people of God at Trinity, thank you for joining me for yet another weekly reflection. Do you know about the Caring Bridge site where people in a health crisis or their loved ones or both can post journal entries about what is happening and people supporting them can post their comments? It's not for everyone, but for many at least. It gives a place to refer people to, to learn more about how they are doing when they are bombarded with good intention questions about how they are doing. When I was in college, I lived off campus in a house with five others. We were called the Mansfield Six. Close as we were then, we parted ways and drifted into our lives after. One of those friends recently came back into all of our lives when she let us know her diagnosis of late stage pelvic cancer. Her, par her Caring Bridge posts have been honest and vulnerable, brave and beautiful. A few days ago, she was hit with bad news. Her doctor had let her know that the test results had shown that the cancer had spread and there was no treatment um, available. There were no treatment options. Her response, whatever the outcome, I choose to hope. Tomorrow, I will choose to hope. That is what I know, the only thing I know. Since I first heard Desmond Tutu say, we are prisoners of hope, quoting from the prophet, I have been captivated by that image. I've shared it with you all in sermons, that image of hope being stronger than I am, holding on to me when I cannot hold on. But my friend's defiant, daring words evoke for me a new way of experiencing hope, of understanding hope. And that is that it is something that we choose, we must choose, choose despite evidence to the contrary. And I was reminded of the 92-year-old environmental activist, author, and scholar of Buddhism and deep ecology, Joanna Macy, whose week-long silent retreat I attended several years ago at Spirit Rock in West Marin. Let me just add that there is a lot of reason to lose hope these days. A lot. The news of the past few days has been heartbreaking, and I'm not alone. Cameron, Cameron Trimble writes, from the horror of discovering 751 unmarked graves of children, at a residency school in Saskatchewan, to the building collapse in Surfside, Florida, to the suffering on the West Coast because of the wildflowers, fires, the extreme heat and the drought. I imagine the suffering of the trees and the animals who have no refuge and need water to have any chance of surviving, and I am heartbroken, and I am tempted to look away. I've come to deeply appreciate Joanna Macy and her definition of hope, of active hope. Active hope, she says, is a practice like Tai Chi or gardening. It is something we do rather than have. It is a process we can apply to any situation and it involves three key steps. First, we take a clear view of reality, of what is. Second, we identify what we hope for in terms of the direction we'd like things to move in or the values we'd like to see expressed. And third, we take steps to move ourselves or our situation in that direction. For Joanna Macy, Active hope isn't about wishful thinking or denial of the real pain of life. Active hope is about staring directly into the heartbreak, seeing the change that needs to be manifest and getting to work making it so. Active hope is fierce, it's honest and it's brave. Let me offer you this quote from Joanna Macy and Chris Johnson. Active hope is a readiness to discover the strengths in ourselves and in others, a readiness 
to discover the reasons for hope and the occasions for love, a readiness to discover the size and strength of our hearts, our quickness of mind, our steadiness of purpose, our own authority, our love for life, the liveliness of our curiosity, the unsuspected deep well of patience and diligence, the keenness of our senses, and our capacity to lead. None of these can be discovered in an armchair or without risk. So much of our world is hard to look at. So much breaks our heart. But that's where we begin. Rooting our hope and trusting that God is with us every step of the way. So let us be fierce and honest and brave and let our hope be active. Amen.